Welcome to the sixth episode of the series of the tutorial series. I'll cut right to the chase. In this episode, we'll be covering particle effects. I'll explain what particle effects are and a brief process of creating your own. So, what are particle effects? Well, particle effect in truth is just a fancy name for a visual effect, like the special effects you would see in movies, fish visual tricks, and all that. Like, I'll show off a few examples. Let's go to the entity list and then under the effects folder you'll find the particle effect. So I'll drag and drop that into the world. And for my first example I'll have some very highly detailed wooden locks here that I'll use to simulate a campfire. So let's go to the entity properties of the particle effect entity. And now here under effects you'll have to browse. And then I'm going to show you where you can find all the pre-existing particle effects. For Seer Sentry you'll find them in presets and then effects, as you can see there's a lot of uh, folders here. For Seer Sam HD you'll find them just under effects, but the effects for Seer Sam HD are a little more limited than Seer Sam Tree, so we'll use that one for this tutorial. Alright, now let's find a fire particle effect. There's one here under the generic tab uh, folder. So let's um, let's load that. All right. Now, as you just saw, there was this kind of preview of the particle effect that happened in the edit view. And in order to simulate this effect, you just need to press this little play button in the next to the entity name here. In, in, the, in the bottom, but it doesn't always play by default, but to make it replay you just have to quickly change any uh, property of the entity and then also replay and you'll see a preview of the particle effect and you can use this preview for other entities as well, like the static sound is also supported with this function. But Alright, we've got a campfire now, doesn't last very long, but that's beside the point. Now, we can use um, particle effects interactively as well. Like for example we only want it to play when somebody presses this C4 and it'll blow up the wall and we have this um, explosion effect. Alright, so let's copy over this particle effect and change the PFX file. All particle effects have the PFX extension. I'll change it to explosion. Alright, this one looks a little small so I'll up the stretch value to 2, that's better. Alright, we want the particle effect to play when somebody presses the C4. Now, I've already made something of a setup for this, you can see here. And now, let's say particle effect start. And now we drag and drop the particle effect onto the variable. And the start function is the normal function for starting up a particle effect through scripts. There's two things you need to change in the particle effect itself as well. You need to disable auto start so that the particle effect doesn't play when you load the level, as well as change control from scripts to, to game scripting, which gives us the permission to dynamically control this particle effect from the outside. All right, now let's test this setup. All right, we can use the C4. Three, two, one. Well, and that's another example on how to use particle effects. All right, I'll show off one more example for particle effects. Let's um, copy over the part this particle effect and paste it anywhere. And now I'm going to add in a rain effect, like. For example, the rain effect that is present in some of the Series MHD levels. So let's go to the um, effects folder and let's select the rain BFX. And as you can see, it's raining now. But we're still missing a rain sound. Now, it might seem tempting to use this uh, sound property here. But this sound pro property of the particle effect doesn't always work. I would not recommend using it. Instead, I would just use a static sound. So let's go into the Series MHD folder. Alright, a rain effect. Yep, it's 
suits our purpose. Now we disable looping and 3D. Uh, we, sh we should actually have looping enabled. We disable 3D so that the range of the static sound is infinite, so we can hear the rain from all across the map. Well, the skybox, of course, doesn't really fit the rain, but that's beside the point. You can uh, change the cube background texture to something more befitting of rain. But yeah, that's how you can create a simple rain effect if you so wish. Alright, now I'll walk you through the process of creating your own particle effect. The creation process of a particle effect can be quite complicated as there are a lot of settings to fill around with and it's not always as uh, obvious what a certain setting does, but I'll try to explain everything to the best of my abilities. So let's spawn in a particle effect and under the effects properties like new and see effects. And the first thing you'll notice is this error. Error spawning particle effect entity at yada 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 due to its effect params not being saved in separate file. Very simply put, if you do not save the particle effect as a PFX file, it will not be played by the engine. So you will need to save it. Let's just go with my awesome effects that PFX for no good reason. You know you should give your um, entities some more descriptive names but all right here we have the settings of a particle effect the, you can select if it only plays once or looping we'll keep it like as looping for now and there's a lot of other options too but what's important to us now is particle effects so press this yellow plus and you'll have a few options for the sake of this tutorial we'll use the machine particle effect this is the standard setting for most scenarios. And what is this? Yes, you can see we have a lot of gray squares, um, uh, like a fountain uh, of gray squares is uh, appearing. Well, that means you've successfully created a particle effect, just that all the settings are at the default. We've also not s selected any sort of texture for it. So that's the first thing we'll change. We'll add in a texture. In order to do that, you need to go to the material setting here, select new shader preset, add a new configuration, a standard one. You'll see that the gray squares no longer appear, don't worry, we'll fix this soon. And I'm going to use this texture, this, this ice texture, as an example. So that's like if I wanted an ice cake, I could add these little frost uh, effects. So. And you'll also need to add in a base UV map called texture. And set the blend type here to translucent. Alright, and now we've replaced our gray squares with tiny little snowflakes. Alright, now we'll see about actually changing the um, emitting settings for these particle effects. So, collide material. And here, select the emitter life option. And here are a lot of settings for controlling in what ways our particle effects in this instance are snowflakes appear so let's there's a lot of settings here but let's go over it emitter shape controls in which kind of uh, shape the individual particles appear so if I set it to box you'll notice that's the uh, effects appear in a more square boundary and if I set it to cylinder you'll notice that as well let's keep it at sphere for now that's the ideal setting emitting frequency is the amount of particles that's is created per second. So if I set it to one, we see that it creates one snowflake every second. So let's set this to something like two. Okay, particle life is how long the individual particle lasts. So we have a min and a max setting. So it will last, right now it'll last any, anywhere between half a second and a full second. But I want it to last a little longer. So let's say between four and six. All right. Uh, particle launch velocity is the speed at which the particle is launched. I should be obvious. Again, it has a minimum and a maximum. I wanted to set it to something lower. So let's say 3 and uh, 5. Okay, I'm gonna move it up a bit. Uh, particle launch spin is, well, I'll show that. If you look closely, you can see. Yes, there we go, that the snowflakes kind of spin around in the air. Uh, particle birth size is the size of snowflake. So, 
as you can see they're a little bigger now and finally as for emit direction uh, emit direction controls the uh, well the direction in which the individual particles can spawn the H stands for heading and it is this green circle that appears on the axis when you hold down control so right now 360 so it can go in any direction it wants and the B which is the red circle here which stands for pitch uh, so it can only rotate up to about 90 degrees so let's say I wanted to give it complete freedom in this and just set the pitch to 360 alright there we go alright that's all for the emitter life but there are still more settings to toy around with let's go to particle life this is the second most important setting for uh, controlling your particles we you can set their color here you can you can also change their the size dynamically at their weight I'm going to explain what that means but let's say for example I wanted the particle to gradually uh, shrink as it uh, as it exists in the world well you can't Seemingly you can't change that because this is a constant value. If I set this to 0 0.5, everything will be shrinked by a half. But if I press this little plus here, we have the graph option. So let's press this little arrow here, new, and we have a few graphs like uh, a sinus so that it uh, switches between a maximum value and a minimum value. We also have step down here. Let's select that. And now if we follow the particles, you can see that they gradually get slower and eventually disappear because their size is now set to zero. Now I'll show why this works. If you press this little graph icon here, you can see that the editor has automatically created a linear graph that goes from the point y1, x0 to the point x1, y0. And the i value controls um, the actual the actual value that you're changing and the X value controls the speed at which it happens. There's still one thing I'm not quite as fond of however. Every particle here goes down. I also want some to to float upwards. So how this works is as in real life physics every object that is affected by gravity needs to have weight. So if I simply set the weight to zero the uh, particles now float in their own direction uh, without having to worry about gravity. Well, I'll set the weight a little higher just to make sure that it doesn't to make just so it doesn't seem like we're in space. All right, but this looks a lot more realistic now. I'm still gonna I'm gonna optimize the settings a little. All right, I've done the change. I've changed the color a little to be more cyan color. Uh, you can right click the, this color bar and then click numerically edit frames and then set the color here normally as you would. Also lower it to the velocity a little and I've edited the graph in such a way that it also um, becomes larger, goes from zero to maximum stretch as it spawns in but also shrinks again when it spawns out. Now I've done this, I've changed the graph type from step down to uh, linear and then right clicked on the graph and then added in these points where at the beginning the y value is 0 after a quarter of a second the y value is 1 again and after another quarter of a second the y value is 0 again so you get this enlarge and then shrink effects well all I can say is thank you for watching this tutorial uh, I fully encourage you to keep playing around with all the settings in the uh, particle effects there's a lot more to learn there see see what does what experiment a little and go nuts if you have any requests for future episodes leave them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do about covering them farewell